Hello, my name is Siri Nelson and I am the 2019 Estelle Cohn Fellow at Cohn Cohn and Colapinto. Thank you for joining us for being a whistleblower lawyer. I'm here with Stephen Cohn and Michael Cohn, who are founding partners at Cohn Cohn and Colapinto. So, Mike, please tell me about your background and how you became a whistleblower lawyer. Well, I became a whistleblower lawyer. Well, maybe I became a whistleblower first. Uh, but in reality, it was society. You saw great injustices at my uh, early years, and they just made me want to change society. And I finally realized that uh, if whistleblowers were the greatest force in our system that allowed you to confront fraud and corruption and hatred. And uh, so I became a whistleblower. Lawyer. How about you, Steve? Well, I never thought I'd become a lawyer when I was younger, but I got a job handling and assisting in police abuse cases down in Rhode Island, that terrible situation there. And even though I was just in graduate school, I was asked to represent people who were uh, getting beating up, beaten up by the cops. And I realized that you can really use the law for good. And then I realized that whistleblowing was this combination of helping an individual, which to me was very important, but also addressing major issues in society, anything from the environment, public health and safety, corporate fraud, all the issues that whistleblowers raise. So I became a whistleblower lawyer, but in a sense, whistleblowing made me the lawyer. So what would you tell a potential client about what you do for them um, if they were thinking about blowing the whistle and wanted to have representation, Steve? Number one, you need to know what your rights are. Because if you get into a whistleblower situation, you're most likely gonna, going to be retaliated against. And that's a very painful situation. But under current laws, there's ways to blow the whistle anonymously and confidentially. There's ways to get awards. There's very powerful rights under some laws. You have to know what your rights are before you confront a boss with allegations of wrongdoing or fraud. What would you say about that, Mike? Well, I would say that the most important aspect of a whistleblower lawyer is to be able to crystallize what the whistleblower is really saying, because they can be and figure out what law works. Is there a law? Is there a way to protect the whistleblower's identity? Because the laws have changed over time greatly. So when we first started practicing law, whistleblowers were just going to be destroyed pretty much no matter what. Maybe you could get them their job back after a decade, and that was pretty much what whistleblower law was. And today, we help forge a path so that whistleblowers can have anonymity and uh, actually be rewarded for the information they provide. And, and that's something that is at the forefront of my mind because representing whistleblowers in the past was a painful experience you you suffered with the whistleblower the whistleblower lawyers suffered together because there were the whistleblowers didn't have any money to pay and uh your chances of winning were low and so it was a, a real battle for both and we were help able and and Stephen took the rowing war on this and got these laws changed particularly with the dodd frank act it was a marvelous change that made my life happier. Thank you. So, I mean, as the Estelle Cohn Fellow, I've learned so much about what it's like to be a whistleblower lawyer, and there's been some surprising aspects. What would you want an, any student thinking about going into this profession to know about representing whistleblowers? Um, let's start with you, Mike. Well, first you have to 
assess the ability of the whistleblower to withstand the process. So, so you find out what law it is, what type of protections they really get, and give them a frank assessment of where they, what they're up against, and and tell them this is your odds of winning or what's going to happen, and let them uh, go through the process knowingly. Uh, the problem is that uh, whistleblowers have misperceived what the rights are, the laws are, and they've taken steps that may have already terminated their case and they don't even know it. So it can, it can be a very frustrating experience for the whistleblower and lawyer. As you're, so get engaged right away so you can get the right advice early on to go through a maze of laws and patchwork of remedies that hopefully your lawyer can figure out and, and get you through. What do you think about that, Steve? Well, obviously I agree. He's my brother and my partner, so I agree. But I will say this. The revolution in whistleblowing law is that whistleblowers are entitled under some of the most powerful anti-corruption laws ever passed. The most powerful. Not only to anonymity and confidentiality, but to multi-million dollar awards. And people don't know this. And I've had so many whistleblowers, they tell me what they've done and, and, and all the retaliation they felt. And I sit back and say, you know, if you'd done this right, you could have been confidential, kept your job, and maybe gotten a check for $50 million. It's, it's so inconceivable to most people that a whistleblower can get large awards the, the stereotype is that the whistleblower is being retaliated. The whistleblower is the martyr. The whistleblower gives up their career for the public good. But because of the incredible contributions to the public good, because Congress recognized that the whistleblowers were the key source of information on some of the largest frauds ever, they've made some of the laws really, really good. And that's where we're at now. So also my advice to a student, a law student coming into this practice is it's not what you think. It's not just getting out there and banging your head against the wall. But one other point I think is essential is these cases are all difficult, are all stressful. There's so much at stake in terms of the whistleblower, how much they can lose. Also, potentially, how much they can win. And it's very stressful, and you've got to be able to deal with that. And you also, I like to say, you have to have, it's all, the whistleblower lawyer needs the same type of courage as the whistleblower, because there's a lot of unknowns, and it's pretty difficult going up against some of the largest banks and corporations and holding them accountable criminally for what they've done. Well said, well said. There are a lot of stereotypes about whistleblowers floating around out there. Um, what is the one thing that you wish the public knew about whistleblowing that they don't know today? Well, I'd say the one thing that the public needs to understand is that the laws, there is not a universal whistleblower law. You don't get immediate whistleblower protection. That's just the misperception that our society has. There's specific laws, they're narrow, they're hard to comply with. Uh, with the exception of these newer laws that came out, uh, particularly in the Dodd-Frank and under the IRS whistleblower programs, these on deal with financial frauds. Those, those laws are so much better than all the others that they're in an entire, uh, different realm where the whistleblower is protected. It's like basically Stephen and I's life over decades of watching people be destroyed and whatnot and saying, if we follow this route, we can get whistleblowers to where they need to be, society where it needs to be with rewarding whistleblowers instead of punishing them. So that's my take on it. What about you, Steve? People have a misconception about whistleblowers. They're often viewed as maybe a disgruntled employee, a snitch, or whatever. What I have found is they tend to be the best employees, the most loyal people. You know, in the stereotype, it's like, do you want to work with a whistleblower? They may turn you in. 
But what I've come to learn is that's the person you would want. If you were in a war, that's the person you want by your side. They're the ones with the courage. They're the ones with the ethics. And, and that was really the, the single most surprising thing that I've learned is that all those stereotypes, you know, people are people. You get some good, you got some bad. But the stereotypes about whistleblowers are so fundamentally wrong that it creates a, uh, a a terrible situation for many people. So that that's the main point that I would like to raise on. Thank you so much. And I just want to thank you both for participating in this discussion. It's always great to hear your insights. Being an Estelle Cohn Fellow has been such an honor and a pleasure, and I highly recommend the experience to anybody. I hope you enjoy the rest of our whistleblower programming and have a great day. Thank you.